Hey, I'm John. Thanks for joining me for this video today. In this video, I'm going to be building a Primaris Impulsor. 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 Let's try that again. In this video, I'm going to start working on a Warhammer 40,000 Primaris Impulsor. <laughs> Now essentially what this is, is a big floating armored personnel carrier. It doesn't have tracks or wheels or anything like that. It just kind of hovers along the ground because it's cool and stuff. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be doing it in the Ultramarines blue though. I've decided that I want to do a green vehicle. And though I am not a 40k player and don't know a whole lot about the lore, a little bit of research on the Googles has showed me that there is a group called the Salamanders which is a scary sounding name, I guess. Um, but they're green, so I wanted to do a green vehicle. So this is gonna be a salamander's impulsor. And I don't know if it's legal to impulse salamanders, but we'll find out. <laughs> now, one of the reasons I chose this kit, besides the fact that I just love doing Warhammer kits, is it, because it's an APC, it's an open air APC. It has this interior. And I love painting me some Warhammer interiors. So as you can see from these pictures on the box art, that th this is going to be, this should be a lot of fun uh, to paint all of these parts and all of the scopes and uh, various things that are on the inside of it and really dirty up this, this floor here. So I've always enjoyed doing that. So this is where we're headed, except green. All right, I have everything off the sprues and I've got it assembled as far as I want it at this point. All right, I've primed everything in this dark green color. Um, it's actually, I, I started to prime it in black, but then I thought, well, I don't wanna have to spend a lot of time covering up black, but I didn't have any green primer. And then it dawned on me that if I just took some Mr. Surfacer 1000, thinned it with uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner and put in a few drops of a green color and some black to darken it down, I would essentially get a uh, dark green primer. So that's what I went with. It's just a combination of Mr. Surfacer and some Mr. Color paints. They're lacquer paints, so they have great adhesion and work very well as primers. Now the first color I'm going to be using is uh, Caliban Green from Citadel. And I'm going to be using this big fluffy brush to apply it. I've been recently watching a channel on YouTube called Artis Opus. And uh, the presenter on there, and I, I, I've been trying to find his name, but I can't find it. He has a series. They have a, Artis Opus is not only a channel, it is a, a brand. They sell brushes, some of which are large brushes that look kind of like this. But I'm told they have stiffer bristles. But he uses a method for, for painting that is essentially dry brushing. And it may be more of a wet application like this, but he does it in such a way that it gives these full coats that look uh, quite smooth in their application. And uh, it, it's, it's taking dry brushing to, I guess you'd say, almost a next level. It's a refinement of dry brushing like I've never seen before. Um, he shows doing a Dark Angel's uh, Space Marine that the edge highlighting and everything is done with dry brushing, and it looks tremendous. And so I'm going to be painting this in that style, uh, trying to replicate some of what I've seen him do on his channel. Now, I'm, I'm just learning this, and so I'm in no way claiming to be the person that you need to, you know, this see as the authority on it, because I'm not. But it's a fascinating technique. What, what I like so much about seeing it is how approachable it is. I mean, you know, it's obvious when you watch a lot of the different painting channels that doing what they're doing is 
uh, doable, you know, because they demonstrated on camera. But oftentimes, the practicality of figuring out, okay, how do I get it to look like that can be difficult. And what I love about uh, the artist's opus work is that this technique is so very approachable, so, so very um, applicable by anyone. Uh, you see that I'm not doing anything special, I'm not doing anything refined, and, you know, not to, to take away from their product that, they, that, you know, that they show on there, which I'm sure is very good. Um, I'm just doing this with a cheap makeup brush. I didn't even thin the paint. Uh, you know, and part of this is an experiment for me to see, okay, how do you do this? How do you replicate that, that look that, that he gets? But look at the paint where it's drying. Look at where it's going on there. That's a, that's a pretty nice coat for just rough dry brushing uh, this paint on. So anyway, this is the, the technique that I'm going to be using for all of the main base colors, um, as I'll demonstrate as we go further along in this video. Now, for areas that will not be painted green, I'm not worrying about whether I hit them or not. Like this thing right here, that's going to be lead belcher eventually. But at this point, I'm not worrying about whether I get some green paint on it because lead belcher is a good base paint and it's going to cover up any of that. So uh, don't be worried if you're trying this method out. Don't be worried about being too precise with these initial broad strokes of color because all of that can be neatened up, as they say. One of the things to, to bring up more artist opus uh, stuff one of the things that, that they do on the channel that I find fascinating is they have, now they have a product for it, I've had to kind of recreate it, but they have this little well that has a foam thing in it with some water, and he'll occasionally not soak the, the, the brush in the water, but he'll get some, some on the tip and just kind of work it off and then get into the paint and it really does make putting on the paint much smoother. Now, of course, you know, you'd say, well, of course, some water thinning the paint helps it go on smoother. But I've never seen that done with dry brushing uh, or, or even wet brushing because the idea there is you don't want the paint too wet. If you thin your paint too much or you soak your brush in water, then, then, uh, it's certainly not going to work as well, but this this little palette that I kind of recreated here to just every now and then moisten the bristles, just the tip of it. I mean, he just as I watched, he just just touched just the tip to it. Um, it really does make a great difference, and I am I I love painting Warhammer minis. But, and I always have fun with it, but I will tell you, this, this application method has made it even more fun because it's so easy and so quick. And uh, I've still got to get a little bit on there, but you see how quickly you can just get broad coverage over, uh, over the model. So let me continue with that and we'll get on to painting the rest of the interior. All right, the next color I'm going to apply is this wah flesh. I'm not sure how many A's you're supposed to say in there. Wah flesh. But <laughs> um, I'm going to be applying this. And this time I'm going to be using, one, I'm going to be using the same brush, uh, the same uh, makeup brush. I've cleaned it off, but not to the point that it's wet. But I'm going to be doing a more traditional dry brush in that I'm going to get some of the color off. Now there's not a huge amount of difference between this and the Castellan Green. Apologize for that jump cut. My microphone just fell. Um, so I had to fix that. But there's not a huge color difference. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top of each piece and I'm going to work it down avoiding the 
the sh the sh the the area you know the areas the brush won't reach I'm just going to let those stay the Caliban green and then I'm going to get in here like on the seat although I'm going to be repainting that but it's just going to start a process of kind of introducing some fading or some some contrast between light and shadow um, and this this wah flesh will start the basis for that and you see there's not a huge amount of difference and it's still drying a little bit there but I've been testing it on several pieces I've actually tested it to the degree that I'm going to with all the colors and I like what it does so um, I'm just going to continue doing this to the interior and especially focusing around the top the areas that are going to be more well lit and we'll just keep working that and see where it goes the next color I want to use is warpstone glow now for this color I'm going to do even more of a traditional dry brush and I've switched to a smaller makeup brush so I want to hit the edges with fairly broad strokes. I'm not going to try and confine it just to the edges because what I want to do is I'm also I'm also wanting to introduce some color on these broader flat areas that's just bringing that down even more to create some tonal variation. And again, it's not going to be real it's not going to be as bright a green as Warpstone Glow is. It's not going to be real obvious but as I keep adding these layers it really does build up to what I think is a very pleasing look now on the edges like up here the bolts I'm being much more deliberate about getting those and making sure I'm starting to get some edge highlighting there I'm still gonna go in and do one more color that's gonna brighten it up even more because I really want to go for a kind of a bright games workshoppy kind of look not a not like a traditional armor builder I'm not a traditional armor builder but not like if a traditional armor builder built a Warhammer vehicle but I want it to look games workshoppy so you know influenced by that style so here I'm just going in and I'm just stippling on this color Keeping in mind that a lot of this is going to be painted. The, 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 these seats, the, the backs where I guess the Space Marines hook in and they, you know, get their batteries recharged or whatever they do, um, those are going to be painted uh, a different color. So hitting those with the color is not that big of a deal. But like up here on the top where this is going to have the light hitting it, I really want to color that in with this Warpstone Glow so that it gives... Uh, a more characteristic remember we're not doing dark angels here we're doing salamanders did I mention that anyway that's what I'm doing so it's it's a it's a little bit lighter green than the dark angels so I want to make sure that I'm lightening it up um, so that it you know it looks the part I don't think that there's an exact color of green but there's just a, 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 a style that kind of gets you there so that's what I'm doing with this Warpstone Glow alright now I'm really gonna be punching up the highlights with this Moot Green it's a very bright green and I've switched to an even finer makeup brush and uh, I bought a pack off of Amazon if you're wondering why I have so many makeup brushes and for this I'm gonna be doing a much more whoops I say a much more focused dry brush and then I go and munge it up but I'm going to do a much more focused dry brush to really bring out those edges like this. Okay, I have my greens applied, and now you can see that it's giving it a very contrasty, bright edged, uh, edge highlighted look. Um, now, there's going to be further weathering that will go over this, and there's going to be obviously more paints that go in here. All of this is going to get different colors so there's going to be a lot of more a lot more color going on but you see the basic progression a heavy coat of the Caliban green and then a heavy dry brush of the wah green <laughs> and then uh, 
the the more focused dry brush of Warpstone Glow, but still just using that to kind of provide some color and and contrast. And then the uh, Moot Green is the very bright highlights. And I was deliberately very rough about it. I used the uh, I used the Moot Green in some areas to do some stippling to um, kind of make it seem like there were scuffs and scratches. Uh, there will be later scuffs and scratches that go over that when I get to weathering the interior. You can see that I did a lot of that, and it looks really bright and glowy here. But what I'm going to do is this is going to get a heavy coat of lead belcher um, stippled on there to make it seem like it's worn down to bare metal. So that's going to be toned down quite a bit. And there's still some shading to go and other things. So uh, I'm happy with how this turned out. So. I'll move on now to doing some more base uh, base painting. I'm going to paint this control panel with Vallejo Black Gray. With the paint dry, I'm going to give just a very careful dry brush, mainly along the edges, just to bring those out a little bit. With the dry brushing done, I thin down the sky gray and I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint all the little dials and buttons and things like that so that it will give a nice light base coat for later colors to go on top of. I'm going to paint these inset, I don't know what they're called, recharge walls. Um, I'm going to paint them lead belcher. I'm also going to paint these grab bars up here and I'm going to fully paint everything from this rim all the way inside except for these purity seals here but everything else I'm going to paint in lead belcher. I'm also going to hit just these little parts that are inset right there. The pad on the seat I'm going to paint with some Rhinox Hide from Citadel. I want to give this a rich Corinthian leather look. <coughs> Anyway, they're going to ride around in style. Alright, the skull here, and the bones, and the little streamers on the purity seals are all going to get a coat of Ushabti bone. Ushabti bone. Ushabti bone. Ushabti bone. Ushabti bone. Anyway, from Citadel. <laughs> The wax seals here are going to get a coat of Citadel Corn Red. While I have the Corn Red loaded up on my brush, I'm going to go in and just paint some of these button details along here. I'm going to use some Citadel Averland Sunset to paint a little bit of yellow on some of the buttons also. With the basic colors applied, the base colors, I'm going to start adding some shades. I'm going to go in first with this Coelia Green Shade, which I guess you can assume by its name, it's made for green. And everywhere where there's a green, I guess you'd say a green on green border or recess or anything like that, I'm going to use that to deepen the shadows a bit. For the areas that I painted Lead Belcher, I'm going to go in and give them a complete coverage, I guess you'd say, of known oil. And any of the borders where the lead belcher or any of the other colors border upon the green, I'm going to hit those with some known oil too. I'm going to paint this border in Balthazar Gold from Citadel. It's actually kind of a bronze color. I'd added a shade around the skull and the purity seals. So I'm going to go in with some Ushabti bone and I'm just going to brighten that up a little bit to bring out a few highlights. While the Ushabti bone dries, I'm going to go in and add just some highlights, first round of highlights to these wax parts of the purity seals. For this I'm using Citadel's Mephiston Red. I'm going to add a final bright highlight to the skull and to the parchment papers. And for this, I'm going to be using Screaming Skull from Citadel. 
For this, I'm just hitting the most upturned raised areas. I'm going to add some final bright highlights to the purity seals using Citadel's Wild Rider Red. Using Citadel's Rune Fang Steel, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to brighten up these connection points here and these little hose receptacle things here. And I'm also going to try and do a very, very fine edge highlight right there on the Balthazar Gold. Alright, I want to paint that seat cushion, this leather part here. I've got some Doom Bull Brown on my brush that I have thinned way down with water. If you want to know how thin, that's how thin. It's very thin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at one end and I'm just going to bring the color forward like that. Now I'm not worried if it's a little brush streaky because those brush strokes when they're all together, as you'll see towards the end, they're going to make it look a little bit like the cracks that form in leather. What I'm doing here is I'm pulling the stroke forward so that it deposits more paint at the end of the stroke than at the start of it. And I'm just completely covering it. Now I'll hit that with a hair dryer, let that dry, and then I'll do another round of it. All right, I'm going to do it again. This time I want to start just a little further from the back. And I'm just going to start pulling that paint along there like that. About one brush width from the back. Again, I'm not worried about being particularly uh, straight in my line or anything like that. I just want to get good coverage built up. All right, I'm going to continue the process. Now I'm about halfway up. And I'll just do this, I'll probably do, after this, two more rounds of it. Each time coming a little further forward with the color. Alright, using some Tuscore Fur, which is a lighter color, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to dry brush right at the edge. And I'm going to let it hit a little bit back on the seat. I'm just going to dry brush all the way down this edge and then off camera so I can see what I'm doing I'm going to get these edges on either side like that. Alright so I've got that painted up. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Um, real happy with how the seat came out. That's a real simple method for uh, just getting some a gradient going on any surface and uh, making it look, in this case, making it look a little bit like leather. I'm going to do a very similar process as I did for the seats on the uh, the displays on that back wall. I'm going to base them in Cantor blue and then I'm going to begin the process of very thin layers with this Ariman blue and then I'm going to do the highlight with Baharath blue. Now I'll lay this first dark layer over the whole surface of each of these panels and I'll probably have to put on two coats to get good coverage and keep it smooth. Now I want the gradient to go from top to bottom and on the round pieces I also want to keep some of the the roundness to it I guess you'd say. So on this I'm going to start and I'm going to glaze all the way from the bottom to the top letting it deposit more color up there at the top. And then here I want to start at one edge and bring it around and then as I move around I'm going to move further up to maintain that kind of roundness to it. And I'm just going to continue doing these layers of it just like I showed with the seat in the same way progressively moving up towards the top in this case. All right, once I get that second color, the Ariman blue on, and it's built up pretty much to full opacity near the top, then I'm going to switch to the Baharath blue. And for this, I'm going to do a much, much uh, more controlled 
highlight just near the very top, just to really bring out that glow towards the top. All right, after quite a bit of back and forth, I got it to the point that I said, I'll live with it. <laughs> All right, I really want to chip up this floor area, so I've isolated it with some tape. And then I'm going to go in with lead belcher. And I'm going to just start chipping this thing up like this really heavily. All right, I've got that to my liking, so let me just pull this tape up here. And... That's pretty much the effect I wanted. It's been walked on a lot, stepped on a lot, things dragged across it, it's wearing the paint right down to the metal, and because they keep doing it, it wears it down so that it's shiny. All right, I'm gonna get a head start on the weathering, which will actually be part two of this video series, by just covering this whole floor area in a heavy layer of Agrax Earth Shade because I want it to look dirty. All right, and you can see this dry fit here, how that's looking. That's that's pretty much what I was going for. I'm, I'm pretty doggone happy with that. Uh, these Citadel vehicle interiors are always fun to paint, and uh, I'm really liking how this one is turning out. All right, well, I think I'm going to call this a video. Uh, I've accomplished what I wanted to, which was uh, kind of an introduction to the kit, and then looking at painting the interior and getting it ready to go. Uh, next up, and I'll do it off camera, next up will be building the whole kit and getting all of it prepared for painting. Uh, and then in the second episode of this series, I'll go over the painting and the weathering of the whole model. So uh, please be sure, and how's this for a segue? Please be sure and subscribe down here uh, if you haven't already done so, and click the little bell icon so you'll know when new videos come out. And uh, I do appreciate you watching this one, especially if you're still watching at this point. Thank you so very much. I am grateful. Well, be sure and check out the links down below. I've got links to my social media platforms, and if you're on one of those, please connect with me. There's a link to my blog. Check that out. There's also a link to Patreon. Uh, I'd be most grateful if you would check that out and see what uh, I have offered there. I give uh, twice a month uh, updates on what's going on, kind of behind the scenes uh, looks at what's going on and what's coming up in the build calendar so that you'll be aware of what's coming up in the future. And then for the top two tiers, uh, there's also exclusive videos and other uh, material that, that uh, you won't find anywhere else. I don't put it out on, on uh, the socials or I don't put it out on YouTube. It's exclusively for, pa for patrons. Blech, I can't speak today. So uh, please take a look at that. And if you're already a patron, thank you so much for your support. I couldn't do it without you. I am grateful, as my family is also. Thank you very much. And with all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.